since the beginning, artists have tried to represent those things which are abstract by transforming them into persons, thus allegories. We see rivers, mountains, feelings, and many other things that acquire human forms with personalities. One of my favorite allegories is the four continents, those of Europe, Asia, Africa, and America. Eugenia haven't been totally discovered, and those islands who were known weren't considered as a different continent yet. During the 17th century, with the discovery of the American continent, artists were inspired to depict this new continent with its companions. The question is, how do you represent them? They are not exactly abstract, as they do have a shape and location. But painters wouldn't design just another map, would they? In this video, we are going to explore some renderings of the abstract concept of continent. But please, before we continue, hit the like button, subscribe and activate the bell for notifications. Now we can resume the topic of this video. Between 1612 and 1615, the Flemish painter Peter Paul Rubens realized his interpretation of the Four Rivers of Paradise, as it is also called. In it, we can see four couples. Rubens gave each continent and its river physical characteristics that allow us to identify them. On the far left, we see Europe accompanied by her main river, the Danube. Besides them, the Nile River is partnered with Africa. The tigress fiercely protecting her calves is below the image of Asia and the Ganges. Finally, the youngest woman is the representation of America, the New World, with the Rio de la Plata. One interpretation that has been given to this painting was that as Europe was submerged in a period of on and off religious war, this may indicate Rubens' desire for peace and abundance. Another famous allegory located above the staircase of the residence Würzburg in Germany is the Apollo's fresco titled Apollo and the Continents, created in the 1750s. As one approaches the staircase and begins climbing it, the viewer discovers new elements on the image. The Apollo went even further and included gods, planets and the zodiac. Apollo is portrayed at the center of the artwork as the god of the sun, while the continents pay him homage. It was designed to glorify Bishop Carl Philip von Greifenklau, who commissioned the building. Masterpieces like this is what makes the Apollo one, if not the best, painter of the Rococo era. Sculptors have also tried to represent the continents. One of them was Jean-Baptiste Carpeau in 1872, as part of a commission by Baron Haussmann, the French sculptor created the four parts of the world to be a fountain. For the task, Carpeau decided to arrange the four allegories dancing in circle as they hold up a sphere representing the world. Just like the previous painters, he attributed specific physical features to each woman. What's most important about this sculpture is that it seems that Karl Poe wanted to give a political and social statement. As we examine the work, we notice that the African continent has a chain around her right ankle, on which America is stepping on. This way, the sculptor remembers the enslavement of African people, who were shipped to America. It served as a reminder of the terrible behavior that had just been abolished seven years earlier. As we can see from these three examples, humans have always been intrigued by the abstraction of things and how can we make it tangible. It's very interesting to see how each author chooses to portray something that we can't really see.